find what percent uh, 56 is of 80. 80 over 56 would be incorrect. What are we finding? If we do 80 over 56, what percent are we finding? Percent. There's lots of percents, right? Six percent. Percent. Or we are finding uh, the percentage that something is of fifty-six. Find the percent that what is. If you were like rewording the question, would it be like what percent of fifty-six is eighty? Right. Yes. If you reworded the question, that's what this would answer. If that were the question, this would be the answer. Eighty is one hundred and forty-three percent of fifty-six. What about his answer should have tipped Corbin off that something was wrong? What his answer? What about that tells him that he must not have found that this was at 50? Yeah, Ethan? It says it's more than 100. It's more than 100. How do you, why, why would you say that it should be less than 100? Because it's out of 100. Out of 100? Not necessarily. Um, it's asking what percent of, it's like saying how, out of 80, how much is 56, yeah. not out of, 56, how much is 80? Right. So if we ask how, out of 80, how much is 56, why would that be less than 100? Um, because 80 is a, the equivalent of 100, and uh, 56 is less than 80. Okay, so 100% would be 80, uh, and 143% would be more than 80, so we certainly should expect it to be less than 100, even if we had no other idea about it. It should be at least less than 100%. Right? It's more than 100%. Uh, we give us a percent, this one percent that 80 is of 56. All right, so let's uh, let's see what's correct. How do we how do we correctly find what the percentage is, Jerry? We'd write out to uh, would what percent. What percent would be a percent, and r would be a time. What percent of eighty is fifty-six? Is uh, equal sign. So you'd write out a percent times eighty equals fifty-six. A percent times eighty equals fifty-six. Okay, so some percentage of eighty is fifty-six. Right. That's the way we will always take the percent and multiply by eighty. We'll find fifty-six, or we'll take the percent and multiply by whatever and find. The number that is that percent. Okay. So, so how do we find a percent? Um, if a percent times eighty equals fifty-six, yeah. fifty-six divided by eighty equals minus eight percent. Great. Equals what does it equal? Point seven. Point seven. If we take a percent, the percent in decimal form, uh, times whatever number we want to find the, the percent of, and then this would be the number that's that percent of that number. We can use that and rearrange it to solve any of these percent problems. Okay, so Ramona has tried to solve this problem. Seven is 28% of what number? Seven is 28% of some number. What is that number? In her work, what has Ramona found? does her work, and she does 7 times 0.28, what did she find? As far as percents go.
found a percentage of something, what percentage she find of what? Take a seven. Take point two eight. You're looking at a percent problem. You're trying to find a percentage that looks really fam familiar. So if you took point two eight, which is the decimal form of twenty eight percent, multiply it by seven. What did you just find? Seven percent of twenty eight. Seven percent of twenty eight. Seven percent of point two eight. Wait, no. Seven times. You did. That's exactly what it says. Seven times point two eight. What did you find as far as percents go? Huh? Nothing. Well, we didn't find like the right answer that the question was asking. But if you multiply seven times point two eight. You did it wrong. I'm asking you what seven times point two eight did you find? It? I'm not asking for you to tell me how to do it right. Huh? What was seven times point two eight you find? She did not find the answer. She did not find the number that seven is twenty eight percent of. What did she find? No, she did not find the right answer. She found the wrong answer. Did she find Jared? Probably and seven, and multiply them together because it's a really common thing to do with percentages. When you want to find percentages, you multiply the decimal times the number, and there you go. But what she found was 28% of seven. That's what seven times 0.28 will tell you 28% of seven. 28% of seven is 1.96. If you had seven dollars and you were to give me 28% of that, Give me a dollar and ninety six. It's one point nine six. So what Ramona wants to find is if she fully understands what she's looking for, she's looking for a number that seven is twenty eight percent of. If you think about that number, what that what properties that number might have? That number that seven is twenty eight percent of. What about her answer? One point nine six should tell Ramona that she's incorrect. Something you're expecting about a number that seven would be 28% of. It should be bigger than seven, right? Seven is a part of this number, it's a piece. It's, it's 28 out of 100, right? 28 hundredths of this thing. So whatever this thing is, it should be bigger, so the seven can be 28% of that number, okay? So you know, the answer should be We have no other idea about it. We know that like, which number should be bigger, which number should be smaller. Seven should be smaller. It's 28% of some bigger number. So now we fully established Ramona did not quite do this correctly. So if we're going to do it correctly, how would we correctly find the number that seven is 28% of? Yeah. You take seven times 100 and then divide it by 28. Seven times 100 and then divide it by 28. Why is that? Okay, let's do things we know. Well, we know, know why we're doing it. Okay, so we want to know why we're doing it. Nathan? Um, uh, 7 is the equivalent to 28, so you put 7 over x. So 7 over x. And then 28 over 100. So 7 is to some larger number as 28 is to 100. Yeah. Uh, divide by seven on both sides. Yeah. Divide
divide by 7, okay, so multiply by 1, 7. That's good. That will actually cancel that 7. So, and this cancels with that. We get 4. This is 25? Oh, I'm sorry, never mind. I, I didn't know what I was saying for a second. You're good. <laughs> well, we did cancel out this 7, right? Yes. What What's on this side now? X. Just X is on this side? Uh, 1 over X. Is that X and 1 over X are very different, aren't they? Yes. Okay, but we did get 1 over X equals 100 yes. over 4. Multiply by x over 1. Okay, so multiply by x over 1. On this side, we cancel out the x's. On this side, we get x over 1 times 4 over 100. So on this side, what is there? 1. 1 equals, uh, what we already said is 1 over 25 times x. Almost there. Got to get x by itself. Divide by 1 over 25. Should we divide 1, divide 1, 5, 1 over 25. Multiply by the reciprocal of 1 over 25. And so 1 times 25 over 1, x is 25. In all honesty, that's a whole lot of stuff I would do too. But it was all correct. want to know, like, how did you arrive there? How do you know that that's what you're supposed to do? Okay. If you didn't have the answer, you wouldn't know it was right. So, how do we know that that's the right thing to do? Like, we don't have the answer, right? It's our job to find that number, and nobody can ever tell us what the answer is, because nobody knows what the answer is. How do we know it's the correct thing to do? Say 7 divided by 20. Like last problem is what? If 28 is 28% times A is 7, do you take 28 times the decimal and uh, is 0.28 times A equals 7? 7 divided by 0.28, what is it? A, exactly. So if we want to find 28% of a number, which is this, that's what the saying, 28% of what number? 28% of what number is 7? Uh, 28% of some number is 7, so if we want to find what that number is, it's being multiplied by 0.28, so we divide by 0.28. A equals 7 over 0.28, which is 25. If we remember that we can always take the decimal form of the, uh, of the percent, multiply by a number, and then the result is that percent of that number. two different ways, we've got 25. Both equally good, one fewer steps, but like if you solve it this way, that's great. You're showing, actually this way like shows a lot of understanding about fractions, when things can cancel. We realize that when we multiply this by 1 7, we do cancel the 7, but we're left with 1 over x, not x. Okay? Um, so we have to, we have to be really savvy about our fractions to be able to do that, so that's great too. Dennis is working on this problem. Dennis chooses to divide both sides by 18. I want you to write this down. How does he do that incorrectly? I want you to divide by 18 if you want to. You can do anything you want. When Dennis chooses to do it, he does it.
Sides is really important here. Both sides, okay? So divide both sides by 18. So we'll divide both sides by 18. That looked like that would look like this, dividing everything by 18. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just move over here and we'll do what Dennis tried to do, but we'll do it correctly. 18x over 18 minus 2y over 18 equals 26 over 18. x minus y over 9 equals, simplify this, 13 over 9. Almost there, x is almost by itself. What do we do to get x all the way by itself? Add y over 9. Just x is almost by itself, it just has this minus y over 9. So if we add y over 9, negative y over 9 plus y over 9 is 0. And we have x plus 0 over here equals 13 over 9 minus no, plus y over 9. Can we add these fractions together? How do we know that we can add these fractions together? They're common denominators. They're common denominators. That's what you need. 13 plus whatever y is over 9. So uh, we, we did it Dennis's way. We decided to divide, divide by 18 and do it correctly uh, first. If you were to approach this problem, would you start differently? Would you do something else differently to begin with? All the way back to the beginning, 18x minus 2y equals 26. Last one. Gwyneth wants to solve this for uh, W. So she should divide both sides by LH. Maybe do you do? I feel like we canceled, but how can Gwyneth be sure that dividing by LH will leave W by itself? know that dividing by LH though will leave W by itself. Because you can't bring out LH. Okay, so it's true the L and the H cancel out. The reason I bring it up is um, oftentimes as math students will just cancel things out not really knowing why. So I thought we'd take a second and talk about it so we'd be sure that this is going to cancel it out. Nathan? Um, Okay. Well, you know, why 
why do things cancel each other out? The, this word cancel, we use really vaguely because if I take, uh, say, LWH divided by LH, I say that L cancels L, right? Because L is in the numerator and L is in the denominator, and so they cancel each other out. A lot of times, that's as, that's how we uh, think about it. There's an L there, there's an L there, so across and both out, they're gone. That's not at all mathematical. Okay, so we're going to look at some mathematics. Here. Also, this word cancel. If I said L minus L in some other situation somewhere else in the world, L minus L, L cancels L there too. So in division and in subtraction, we say cancels, though it means two different things. So what is canceling actually doing? Nathan, can um, I answer that question? Or whatever you want to say. If you like times LH on both sides to get V alone, then you times LH by W would be LWH, which equals V, which is exactly how it was at the beginning, so it's like the equivalent. If you, oh, you mean if you reverse this? Yeah. If you multiply both sides by LH, that's a good way to justify it. If I just do the reverse, and I'll, then I'll get LHW, uh, which is the same as LWH. Yeah, that's a good way to go about it. Look at that. You are showing this relationship that, that actually exists. You could also write it this way. Um, write LHW over LH. Just changing the order of a multiplication is commutative. I could do that. Then I write it as two different fractions. If I multiply these two fractions together, will I get this fraction? LHW over LH. Multiply straight across. LH times W. LH times 1. But now what's LH divided by LH? What's anything divided by itself? 2 divided by 2, 4 divided by 4. 1. Remember 1. 1 times W over 1. So 1 times anything is just itself. W divided by 1 is just W. That's how we get to the shield. Now, you might think that I'm overthinking it. Um, but I promise you, if you were to write Every problem like that, when you ask yourself, do these two things cancel in the, in the numerator and denominator? I get that like, as we move on through this year, and as you move on through your math career, uh, from my own personal experience, I get that question a lot. Can I cancel these out? Um, and even maybe worse for you, because it impacts your grade more, you think you can cancel something out, so you cancel it out, but it turns out the answer is no, you can't cancel it. One instance, one example, is what I'm talking and yammering on about up here. Something like that. Is there any cancellation I can do, simplification here? Yeah. You're saying no, that's a good, that's good, good news. Why not? Why can't you cancel the two and the two? Well, how about this? What, can I take 2x over 2? Can I simplify that? Why not? Hmm? Into 1x? You divide the 2 by that 2 and get 1x? Yeah, that's true. 2x divided by 2 is just x. About it. It's really 2 over 2 times x over 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Times x over 1, that's 1. Or, sorry, that's x. x divided by 1 is x. So if I can cancel out the 2 and that 2, can I cancel out this 2 and this 2? No. Okay. That is uh, like a, a warning sign. Right? There's a plus 3. Be careful. Don't do that. It's not exactly the reason why we can't, um, but it is like, hey, there's a plus three there. You gotta think about that. Because the way this is written, this is L times H times W. This is two times X plus three. Just different. They're not being multiplied together. They're being added together. Um, we'll talk more about that at another, another time. But while we're still on pretty simple examples, bring it up. It's a 
reason why they cancel out is because LH divided by LH is one. If you can't, you don't have to write your fraction that way, but if you cannot write your fraction that way so that the thing you want to cancel can be divided by the thing you want to cancel and can be multiplied by you know, the rest of that stuff, you cannot cancel it. And if you think about 2x plus 3 over 2, you try and write that as 2 over 2 times, times what? Well, x plus 3 won't work because you'd have to distribute this 2, the x, and the 3, and you get 2x plus 6. It's not 2x plus 6, it's 2x plus 3. Okay. Maybe for another day. That's it for that. Are there questions from the homework at all? First, they give you this equation, which they call literal, because there's letters all throughout. There's not numbers here. It's all letters sitting in the place of numbers. That's what they're calling a literal equation. They're saying, solve the literal equation for x. Get x by itself. So we'll do that first. And then we'll worry about what it's talking about after that. Uh, we're going to get x by itself. How can we get x by itself? Even if you multiply by a. You multiply a fraction by its denominator. The denominator cancels out, so you multiply this fraction by a. A's cancel out. Multiply the other side by A. X over 1. X. You get B times A across the, the top, the numerator, over C. So we solved it for X. Not, not too many steps involved there, just one step. So what it's saying is any equation that's like this, X divided by a number equals a fraction, another, another number divided by a number, then Whenever we see an equation that's just like that, that fits that pattern uh, exactly the same, x divided by a number equals a fraction, x divided by a number equals a fraction, then by doing this, we've essentially solved all equations that are like this. And we can follow this pattern, uh, just we label all these numbers, and we figure out what those numbers are, like this one is a, this is b, and this is c. Okay? So we take b times a divided by c times a, which is 8, times c. And when it says use the, use the result of solving a literal equation to solve the specific equation, um, or the general equation, I think. No, it says specific. Uh, that's what it means. Just follow that pattern. saying write y as a function of x, which is uh, kind of a fancy way of saying solve for y. When something's a function of something else, when y is a function of x, it means that y can be found, like if we have a bunch of stuff over here with x in it somewhere, if 
we know x, we will plug it in over here and then do all the, the arithmetic in there, we will find y by doing all that, all those calculations. So we're going to solve for y, not solve for x. So solve for y, how are we going to get y by itself? something. And that something, when we multiply the two by that, it has to come up to 2x plus 3. And it turns out we weren't able to do that, right? No. Okay. Here's the same thing. If I want to cancel this 2x with this 2x, it's because I'm taking 2x divided by 2x. But then, what would I write here? But when I multiply it together, I get this fraction. plus 2x, there's that whole side, minus 2x. You just subtract the 2x from this 2x. Find those, 2x minus 2x is 0, so y equals 7 minus 2x. Well, did this 2x negate this 2x? It did, we subtracted, and now it's y by itself. It did, so that y is good isolated, y is by itself. in the bowling league, we pay $25 to sign up. So you pay $25 to sign up fee and $12 for each weeknight that you bowl. So the total cost C in dollars is given by this equation. So you pay $25 up front, and then 12 times every night that you bowl. Uh, yeah, the number of nights that you bowl is x. Solve the equation for x. E, 12x plus 25. Solve the equation for x. Part A, um, I took, what did you do in part A first, right? 
Spells and Corrects, yeah. Okay. Um, I took 25. I took, um, I, yeah, I took five. Subtract the 25 on both sides. Subtract 25 minus 25 is zero. C minus 25 equals just 12x. And then I divided by 12 on both sides. Divided by 12. 12 divided by 12 is 1. Have you pulled if you spent a total of $145? Yeah, you won. It's really three different questions in there. How many league nights have you pulled if you spent $145? How do we. Is this going to help us with that? Yeah. What does X represent? Uh, it represents uh, the number of nights you pulled. Number of nights you C represents? Uh, how much cost per time? Per time? Through like nights, like 125. Would be like How much does it cost per night? Twelve dollars per night, right there. Twelve dollars for each week night that you pull. So what does C represent? C. C. Total cost. Total cost. Everything. All the nights that you pulled plus the twenty-five dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you spent a total of one hundred and forty-five, and you want to know how many nights that was. What do we do? Plugging one hundred forty-five for C. Circle graph shows the results of the radio survey which took the image turn of the were asked to rate a sum. So you see the, the chart there. How many of the listeners who participated in this survey are tired of the song? Well, what does the pie chart tell us about people who are tired of the song? Right, so we've got our books open, the 3.7, 735. Thirty-six percent of people uh, are are tired of the song. How many people are in the survey? Toby. Uh, Two hundred fifty people were surveyed. Thirty-six percent of them are tired of the song. So we're going to figure out how many people are tired of the song.
probably try to tell us about how many people love the song. 14%. Fourteen percent of the two fifty love the song. Fifty on both sides. Two one. Two fifty divided by two fifty is one. And we take two fifty times. Four. So you can also do it that way. Two fifty times fourteen percent. You just move the decimal place over twice. You don't take notes.